I wanted to provide another example of regression. And this is going to coincide with what we talk about in class on Tuesday. But to summarize, what regression does is we have some data. We're going to try to fit a line through that data. And we form the line using a five-step process from available data. Step one, I find the mean of x and the mean of y. Step two, standard deviations of x and y. Step three, correlation coefficient. Step four, sample slope. You see this beta hat right here. Zoom in right in. Correlation coefficient, ratio of standard deviations. Last step, sample intercept alpha, intercept alpha hat. And I want to go through an example of the process so we can understand how it works. Let's look at the first data set where why is the temperature outside I'm sorry X is the temperature outside I should say X is the temperature outside Y is the number of coffees purchased by the economics department so X is how warm it is Y is coffee and I think that maybe the temperature X impacts the amount of coffee purchased Y but I don't think it works in the other direction so calculating the means find the means by adding up these values I add them all up 75 plus 65 plus 55 60 45 35 40 and 80 and I get 455 there are eight total values 56.875 coffee add them all up divide by eight eight and a half I know that 56.875 and eight and a half will be a point on my line Standard deviations, go through this process, take each value for x, subtract the mean, you square it, you add them up, divide by 7, take the square root. 16.24, that's going to go in the bottom of my slope formula. 3.92 is going to go in the top. Correlation coefficient. Again, I'm measuring how far each data point is from the mean. So the mean of x was 56.875, mean of y is 8, I should say y, 8.5. 16.24, 3.92, it's negative. So as temperature goes up, coffee goes down. That's not surprising. It's minus 9.46. And so the slope is minus 0.229. I take the intercept. I subtract the slope, which is negative. I add the mean of x, and I'll get the intercept of 21.511. So going through the process the step the first step find the means the second step find the standard deviations the third step correlation coefficient the fourth step sample slope the fifth step sample intercept and just to be clear as to what's provided standard deviation is going to be provided correlation coefficient will be provided other stuff you need to calculate So let's say we want to make a prediction. How do we make a prediction? We plug a value of x into our line. So I make a prediction for the value of y when x is some number. This is my prediction for the mean. I understand that there may be dispersion. So some days if it's 65, we purchase a lot of coffee. Other days we purchase a little bit. But the regression line is designed to trace through the means. So let's make a prediction for how much coffee is purchased when the temperature is 65. How do I do it? I just plug 65 right in for x. 21.511 minus 0.229 times 65. I predict 6.626 cups are purchased. And our line won't fit the data perfectly. So there's going to be a difference between our line and the prediction for the most part. We're not going to hit everything on the dot. So just create a scatter plot and see whether or not you can put the points through or put the line through those points. You're not going to be able to do it. So there's maybe a difference between the line and our prediction and the data. So the line is our prediction, and it may differ from the data. So let's take a look at the data set. The line predicted 6.62 cups when the temperature was 65. We actually purchased 8, as you can see here. So 8 is the actual data. I subtract 6.626, and 1.374 is what we call a residual. 
And just to be clear, the residual is the vertical distance between the line and the data point. It can be positive, it can be negative. The line can miss up and it can miss down. Now, some lines fit the data well, other lines do not. We need to be able to distinguish between the two. We'd like to be able to use the line to make predictions for y based on values of x. So all I have is an estimated slope. I'd like to know if it represents something about a real slope. What do we mean by seeing if there's a relationship? Well, what we think is going on is that as the data get further away from the line, we start to think the line doesn't fit very well. And we're going to measure distance with the residuals. We're physically going to measure how far away the points are from the line. Now, if you remember the other video, the residuals are designed to average to zero, but the squared residuals are not. We're going to use the squared residuals. So we're going to make everything positive and penalize large deviations this is going to lead us to calculate a standard deviation of the regression. So how do we do this? Here are the eight data points that I have. Whenever I make a prediction, I plug in for x. So this is my line. 21.511 is the intercept. 0.229 is the slope. And I'm plugging in each value of x. 75, 65, 55, 60. 45, 35, 40, 80. And this is the predicted y. Now, here's the actual y, the second column. This is the predicted y. The difference between the actual data and the prediction is the residual, and that's in this fourth column. So if I take this 5, I subtract 4.354, I get 0.646. If I take this 8, subtract this 6.641, I get 1.359 and so on and so forth, but if you look, the sum of residuals adds to zero. That's by construction. The line does not systematically miss up, nor does it systematically miss down. Now let's say I take a look at the squared residuals. I'm just going to square all the numbers. The sum of squared residuals, and this is how far all of the data are from the line as converted to positive penalizing large deviations. It's 11.347. Standard deviation of the regression n minus 2, so I have 1 sixth times 11.347, that's the sum of squared residuals, and I get 1.375. What does that mean on average, okay? On average, our points are 1.375 units from the line. Larger standard deviations mean that points are further apart, but it could increase for lots of reasons. We really stretch the graph out and points are scattered all over the place, so what if these are in millions? Okay, well then we're going to have large residuals sort of by default. So, in this instance, what we're going to do is next calculate the difference between x and its mean. And this is going to tell us whether the graph is stretched far apart or it's not. Here are the values for x. Here's the mean of x. I subtract the 2. I square them all. That's the distance from x to its mean. And we're going to take a look at the square root of this number. That's going to go into our test statistic. So when we determine whether or not there's a slope, our null is always going to be that there's no relationship or alternative is that there might be. This is the only hypothesis we're going to want to test for this class. Although certainly beta could be any number you want to test. So I, I'm not restricted to a slope of 0, but for this class I'll just use 0. Here's my test statistic, sample slope minus 0. This is the standard deviation of the regression. This is the sum of squared deviations. Our test statistic, minus 0.229 minus 0, standard deviation, if you zoom in here, 1.375, this 42, sum of squared deviations. We get a minus 7.15. Now we're going to go to row 6 of the t-table to get a critical value. We do get a critical value of 2.447. We're going to make it negative, and we're going to reject the null. We're always going to have the same process, writing down a null and an alternative, constructing a test statistic, looking up a critical value, and stating findings. 
Now, we're going to skip confidence intervals for now, but what I do want to talk about is having multiple variables in the regression. We're eventually going to do this in Excel, but right now I just want to talk about it conceptually. Multiple variables can explain why. Think of all the things that can influence your income, your education level is going to influence it, but so your parents' income, so what high school you went, so what profession you choose, etc. I would like to ideally control for all of these at once. I'd like to know which variables influence why and how much. So put another way, I could spend money on a variety of different advertising platforms. I care about sales and I'm going to use the betas to measure the slopes for each sales with respect to new, at, new revenue. And as, as you might think, we, we've had a lot of trouble finding the slope of, of one variable. What if we have a bunch of variables? We're going to use Excel. And in particular, we're going to look at reading some regression output. Okay. So here's the regression I estimated for the price of a house based on some characteristics. And in particular, I looked at the age of the house, the bathrooms, the bedrooms, the lot size, and the house size. So price is the Y. All of these variables are the X, 18 through 22. The coefficients are listed here. Coefficient is the slope. So as the house gets one year older, $4,125 is added to the sale price. If we put a bathroom in, it's worth 15925 Bedrooms, we subtract. Lot size, we subtract. House size, we don't. Okay, so some of these are not very intuitive. There are multiple x variables. This is possible. The math is outside of this class, but it's possible. So I've estimated the relationship between each of these variables and y at the same time. So what I've done is tried to control for some of the things that could influence y. Now when I read the regression output, the top here, this r squared, R squared is the percent of variation explained by the regression. Here I have price as the dependent variable and all these other guys as the independent variables. 50.90% of the variation in price is explained by these other variables. N right here, 44. 263631.2749, standard deviation of the regression. Here are t-stats. t-stats are test statistics closer to zero. We don't reject the null, so these are all pretty close to zero. Further from zero, we start to reject the null. What tells us whether or not we reject the null? This is what's called a p-value. Low p-values mean that our data is pretty unlikely if the null is true. So it's very unlikely to see this slope for this variable if there's no relationship. So which of these are statistically significant? This is a higher t-stat, p-value is 0.07, this is it at the 10% level. This is it at the 1% level, house size. None of the other variables are significant. So we use the p-value, if the p-value is less than 0 0.1, 0 0.05, 0 0.01, it's not significant. We look at the t-stat, if the t-stats are large, it's significant. So large t-stats, low p-values, significant. Large p-values, low t-stats, not significant. How would we make a prediction? Well, what we're going to do 
is use all of these values and plug in whatever we want to predict.